Hi, guys. It is a lovely but a little bit rainy evening here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here. It is, I believe, it is May 4th, 2021, which means we are actually one day, one day late for our third birthday at Collapse Chronicles. I did not even notice that our third birthday came and went, but we're going to call this our third birthday here at Collapse Chronicles. I cannot believe that, uh, that we're heading in to year number three and as part of, uh, Part of our third year, I am going to have a few changes around this channel, some of which will be uh, being announced over the past few days. But right now, what I want to do is uh, welcome to the show my buddy Ben Roberts. We're going to go all the way down to Australia to welcome uh, Ben Roberts. Come on and say hello right now, Ben. G'day, Sam. G'day, viewers. Okay, so I, I, I know uh, all of you are are aching to hear who is this young man. So you, I know you have been waiting for the first Collapse Chronicle interview of 2021, and I am uh, presenting this young man, Ben Roberts, and we're going to – this is pretty much all I know about this young man, folks. Uh, okay, so – you know, when my, when my last secondhand man, Jay, uh, after two years of, of selfless service to this channel, uh, went on to the next chapter of his life, and I no longer had a secondhand uh, man to do all the heavy lifting while I had all the fun on Collapse Chronicles, it was Ben who I put out a call, does anybody want to be the producer of uh, Collapse Chronicles and out of a planet of 8 billion people, one person came, <laughs> came to the forefront. So originally the plan was that Ben was going to take over Jay's old job of, uh, of, of helping me find people to interview on Collapse Chronicles and do all the hard work of lining up these interviews and everything. And I was just going to have the fun of actually sitting down and having the interview. Well, uh, I, I am just old and, and worn out, I guess. So I decided, as you guys probably know, I announced that I just don't have it in me. I have too much on my plate to add this, uh, add these interviews. So everything got quiet for a couple of months. So Ben approached me uh, a couple of weeks ago. Well, how about this idea, Sam? That if you don't want to do these interviews, uh, why don't I just do the interviews? And I thought that was a great idea. So uh, I am handing over the Collapse Chronicles interviews to this young man who I believe is 26 years old. 27. Who, 27, mm. who freely admits he has never interviewed anyone in his entire life. So, Ben Roberts, you come on and you tell the folks here, just introduce yourself so we know uh, who you are and why did you offer to take on this challenge uh, here at Collapse Chronicles? Sure. So I followed your channel. I actually found your channel through your interviews and I went down, I went on a binge really. I, I remember like they almost were a daily kind of podcast listen for me because you had already like stacked up quite a few. So I listened through all of them and then I was following along as you were posting regularly. That kind of shifted into, you know, I would watch some of your rants and some of your just your other daily updates. And so I caught that video that you posted asking for a producer one day and I was like, this is the only content lately that I've been able to listen to and not just, I don't know, it, it just felt like the only content that w was resonating with me at the time. And then when you were stopped the interviews, I was pretty disappointed because I absolutely loved the interviews. 
And when you ask for a producer, I thought, oh, this is a cool opportunity. And I'm stoked that he's going to be kicking on with the interviews again. So I remember, I thought that you were going to, we're going to get like a massive, I don't know if you remember this, but I, I thought you might get like a massive influx of people in your inbox. So do you remember I had like stars? Fighting to be the, uh, <laughs> the producer of Collapse Chronicles. Yeah, so you were you were an influx of wine off of a planet of it. <laughs> yeah. And uh and after yeah. all of your uh, selfless offering and hard work, so so this so this this dude he gets on there and, and he lines up a bunch of interviews of uh, you know uh, of some good folks and uh and then I just kind of flaked out on him and said, Well well uh Ben, yeah. I, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just gonna put it on ice for a little while longer. And so uh, here we are. So tell, just 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 tell the folks a little bit about yourself. So all I know about you is you're 27 years old. You live in Australia, and you're obviously some level of a doomer. So yeah, I don't call myself a Duma per se. I, I was going to say, so I'll give a little bit more context if that's all right. Because yeah, when I was going to come on and do the producer role, we filmed a similar interview and oh, I've completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah, we, we already, uh, I, 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 I ran through this interview a couple of months with Ben to give him an idea of, of uh, what it's like to be so he could feel like what it feels like to be interviewed by me but now of course he's going to be doing the interviewing so how did you ever fall down this this rabbit hole i mean we don't have many 27 year olds on this channel so how did someone of your age show up here it was actually the 2018 ipcc report you know when that came out there was like quite a bit of media around it and i had i'd actually been lucky enough if you want to call it that, to have like high school teachers, you know, outdoor ed teachers, they were trying to show us documentaries. They show us like inconvenient truth and stuff like that. And I've always loved nature docos and being a bit of an outdoorsman. So I've always appreciated nature. So when I started reading these things, it was like really alarming to me. And then it's this, it's, it's kind of the same process everyone goes through. You go down like the rabbit hole, you go through all the stages and the, the ladder of grief, whatever you call want to call it. And also like shock that there was no one really talking about it and that it was like, it's this massive thing. And I was really struggling to find anyone in like my personal life to even be able to talk about it with or anyone that was interested in hearing it. You know, I'm sure everyone yeah. has like the same um, relatable scenarios where you're trying to talk to your family, your friends about it. Um, and you end up in, yeah, just looking for pockets of the internet that, that speak about like face reality, I guess is what I like to call it. So that's actually where I was going with my last point. Um, I don't call myself a doomer because yeah, I don't, I don't know. It is kind of doom and gloom, but I just, I just consider it like reality facing reality. There's so many fantasies and human narratives that uphold our current civilization that it's really difficult to let go of them all at once. But I think it's really important to even just like, you know, everyone goes through like this, I think you could almost align like a stepladder of grief with a stepladder of dismantling all of these fantasies that everyone lives in. And it's so much nicer to live in, <laughs> I guess, like when you remove all of those fantasies, it is, it does feel a bit doomish, but at the same time, I think it's been long enough now where I've gone through all of those periods. There are still times where I'm just like, like everyone has, um, even just regular folk, you know, you have days that where it's, things are difficult, but I've, I feel like I've returned to a baseline. And now the reason that when I did hit you up is because I do really value the media that you produce and it, particularly those interviews, you know, bringing together all these people that do try their best to look at reality as accurately as they can. Oh. Just to be answer, clear, I, I mean, you, you you didn't dedicate your your college career. I mean, you're 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 not a quote biologist, ecologist, climatologist. You are approaching this just from a, a layman perspective. Where there's nothing. Wrong. I mean, so am I. Uh, but yeah. is that where you're coming from? Is just as a yeah. Layman? I think there's this, I think there's a strength behind that because I haven't specialized in any particular field. It's just been like a very broad understanding. So I think that when there are scientists that are perceived to have flaws or holes in their 
hypothesis. It's because they've just focused so narrowly on one thing. Yeah. So I haven't had any, I don't have any scientific background. Um, I, I have gone through uni, I have a degree, but it's, it's not related to the environment or, or nature of science in any way. Well, well, as I say, I don't consider this a bad thing and, and mm. I actually consider it a, a, a good thing to to have a a you're 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 not so tied in, in into one aspect of the collapse rabbit hole that you as you were just you know referring to that you are that that you don't see what what is the old forest in the trees analogy that you, you you can't see the forest for the trees you're you're so busy looking at your one tree and yeah. so i think it's very good to uh to you know to bring a more balanced uh open-ended approach to this discussion so you don't get so bogged down mm. but but obviously uh that this is has gotten in your crawl as my mama would say yeah you have to translate these american this american these, like, these terms southern things. isms have gotten in your yeah. crawl this means obviously you're taking it to a, another level of uh, of interest to be answering my call for a, a, a yeah. producer for Collapse Chronicles. I, I mean, uh, maybe someone put out a call for cute cat videos and you answer that as well. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. However. Hundreds, hundreds of them. No, uh, this is the only one. It was, it came from a place of, I, I think, you know, everyone's kind of searches for meaning and, and something to contribute. And it's really difficult to find that when you are like aware of everything. I think, um, you know, there's plenty you can do, but at the same time, uh, like I said, I, I mean, I spent plenty of time on the internet and this was like the only content that uh, I was resonating with. So I really wanted to see it through and you see it continue. All right. So obviously, I, I, I want to I, I want to talk. Say so you're 27. Yeah, brother. I, I am 61, and uh, I used to say with all levels of confidence, I am getting out of this just in time with that screw with that screen door barely hitting me on my guilty ass uh, on my way out. I mm. let's see your twenties, 37, 47, 50. I was 34 years old the day you were born. And mm. uh, if, if I were 27 years old instead of 61, I, I, I don't know what would I be, would I be in a fetal position in the bottom of my closet? Would I be arming myself to the teeth with AR-15s? What does it feel like to be 27 years old in the in the year 2021, understanding uh, what, what's coming down this pipe? How do you stand it? I went through a really long period of, I would call self-destruction. And actually, um, to give a little bit more context, about three years ago, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer and it had spread to uh, some lymph nodes so i had to go through chemo and all that and although the the survival rate is really good i mean they call it the young man's cancer and then like my doctor even said if there's any cancer that you want this is the one um it does have a good survival rate but because of that i feel like i did contemplate you know my own mortality i was really yeah. faced with the end of my own life so i went through all these phases and there was a while where I attributed that to maybe this is why like I can accept all of this information and face it. You know, there's so many people that they're aware of aspects or they're aware of climate change and especially people closer to my age and even younger, they're not so deluded, but at the same time, they, they still have like you know, different forms of denialisms, whether that be all the renewable energy sector that's going to replace everything. But then when I was like really deep down this rabbit hole, there was a very long period where I was heavily grieving, heavily depressed, unmotivated. You, you, you try and like eject from the system and you try and make individual change. You go to climate marches, you do all that stuff. But it was just, it was just completely destructive. And then at the same time, I'm at the stage now where I look at it, I look at, you know, the human organism, like a super organism and myself, like a cell within that, what kind of change can a cell make to this massive body? 
there isn't a lot. You need to look after the well-being of the seller and of yourself. So through this self-destructive period, I damaged lots of relationships with people. Um, I was trying to get them to hear all of this message, all of this messaging. And like I said, you come to the realization that people just don't want to hear it. At the same time, I don't think I'm very good at conveying it with people. And I think it is difficult to convey without being asked about it first. I think people just, they have to want to know and most people yeah. don't. So there's that as well. I kind of just live in two worlds now. I live, you know, in the happy fantasies, which is a lot more pleasant, but then most of the time I can't ignore reality. So that's where these interviews and this side of things comes in for me. Yeah, I, like I said, I think I've gone through the ladder and um, I'm at the other side. There's still times, you know, when you're hearing it from someone like painting, really vivid pictures where it really does hit home and you know you'd be like what should i do should i prepare i'm not i don't i'm not a prepper i really just live like day to day i try and make um, considerations uh, you know with work and my life and stuff and i also just try and spend as much time as i can enjoying it like you say <laughs> nah just spending time with people i love and yet yeah, getting out i love to get out into nature and you know doing things i love get down to the beach luckily australia is still exceptionally beautiful place to live so um, I have all that but I'm not in the process of building a bunker and if I was I would tell you that I'm not in the process of building a bunker <laughs> uh, yeah if you if you had a brain about it yeah so you but you 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 are not on the uh, on the survivalist I make considerations but at the same time you know it's hard when you don't have massive savings and, and, and assets to put behind an underground yeah. bunker and like we have uh, really tight gun control you can get them here but i'm not sure i mean yeah i make considerations but i don't like dedicate massive proportions of my life i have been more interested in permaculture and stuff lately because i have family with larger properties where i think that that could be utilized and i would like to explore that more but you can come up here you know come up here to bugs in a jar farm we will uh you can explore some permaculture i will yeah i will put a shovel in your hand and say go exploring <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's what I've been doing for the past two days, man, is bent over a shovel. It's chop wood and carry water. You can see I, I still live like in the city, basically. So I have my plants and stuff, but I don't have like a massive backyard or anything. In, in, in any plans to change that? I do, yeah. I, I get out there. I mean, would you like to be heading out to the boonies a little more or are you comfortable in the city? To be honest, there's a lot going on in the city that I still like and enjoy and my family and friends are all here. So I don't have plans to move out. I know during COVID, I don't know if you know about Melbourne, but we had like a massive statewide lockdown basically. So many people fled the city. Anyone with like properties out in the countryside or on the yeah. coast left to live there. So there's like thoughts of that and it's definitely ideal if things is going to be. But yeah, I don't have plans in the near future i have been thinking about it more and more lately i have a girlfriend and a job and family all here so i don't want to just remove myself from all that right now but you have a girl i i i well i don't have a girlfriend but uh some people know uh so you have a girlfriend now is she is she on board with this does she want to hear it she's not really she does she's very open to it i mean i've dated a few people since knowing about this and I've bought it up and I usually give like a, by the way, I have all of these views of yeah, collapse and environmental destruction stuff. And people are aware of it. They know about it. When you tell them all this stuff, they know, but they don't want to talk about it every day. So I don't bring it up. And even, you know, my more political friends, when I was, they were the ones that I did speak to a lot about this. I find like people who are extremely focused on politics as opposed to like environment are, are like they have their own form of denialism even though they accept climate change and stuff they only accept it um to the point where it aligns with their political views yeah, and then yeah, yeah. their denialism kicks in so it, that was helpful that friendship group was helpful for a while i still hang out with them love them but you realize they have like i mean when planet of the humans the green, came out the green glass ceiling i call yeah, it yeah, yeah. Exactly. sometimes they frustrate me more than the flat out climate change denier i still i find like my under addicts. my understanding of them is farther from like the flat out further away from like the the deniers because 
they get it, but then they still, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just like a refusal. It's an absolute like, refusal. It's it. <laughs> when Thunder the Humans came out, it was like, it paints this really clear picture and they just got really down into the finer details of inaccuracy rather than just looking at like yeah. the overarching point of the movie. And then one of them, they read all the reviews that agreed with them and like were trashing the movie. And then half of them didn't even watch the movie and the other half just were like, well, they were wrong about this and this. And, and you know, they yes. just they resonated more with these negative reviews rather than, I don't know, trying to understand the, the, the entire point of it. Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> people always confuse me. And I mean, that's what that's what makes them interesting, I guess. So uh, obviously, I, I, I anyone who knows me is no, I'm going to ask you this question. Uh, you're a 27 year old man with a girlfriend. She's on board with this. What is your, are you planning to, uh, be a father? And, 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 and you knew I was going to tread down this path. I, I think I mentioned the original interview that we did and I don't know if you remember my answer in that. Well, let's, let, let's hear it on the official interview. Uh, do I you can't. hope to have children or not? Um, no, not at this stage, but I, I just got to say, I have to cut to that because it's I, one of my favorite clips because I told okay, you, I what, think I told you I had, an, what was your off the cuff answer the first time I, we spoke? I told you, I told you that I had six six kids and you just stared into the camera um <laughs> i broke i broke too soon and like i was i told you i was joking but i really wish i had held it a little bit longer so obviously <laughs> considering your age you know a lot of uh folks your age are in the process of even or, or of starting a family or uh, talking about starting a family and, and having children. So dive, dive, dive right into this sacred cow. Uh, are you, or are you not planning to have children? I have six children actually. <laughs> uh, I think you're so your reaction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll do uh, that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's actually a really timely question because um, a lot of my friends have been talking about it recently. I don't have any children. Um, it's something that I always thought about and I, I'd always wanted three kids. That was what I did. Three kids, big families. I love fam. I love my family. I love families. I love all my friends. Um, but yeah, with all of this knowledge, it's really difficult to, you know, make that decision. I don't have a serious girlfriend at the moment, so it's not something that I've, you know, have a girlfriend in my ear about or anything, but um, I have lots of friends around me who, you know, some are making that decision. And I don't know, like, as, like I was saying, when I was first learning all of this, I went through this phase where I was literally like sounding the alarm and I was telling everyone and it was, you know, that's how I got this reputation I did definitely get a reputation of being like, you know, don't bring that up around Ben. He's going to you know, start. So that is kind of why I guess I don't call myself a doomer now, just because it's like, I did go pretty heavy on it. Just trying to like tell my friends about it. I'm not really good at presenting people with information, I guess that they don't want to know. I'm not very good at like lightly, um, you know, some people have a really, a really good like, like lightning bringing up this sort of content. But me, I'm just like, here is what I know. And like, I want to tell you about it. And um, went through that phase. So lots of my friends and all my close friends, they really uh, like, they know my stance on things. And um, they mention it. And like one, one of my mates, his girlfriend has been talking about it with him. And he, you know, he, they, we kind of like had the typical conversation, like as anyone would have that had no knowledge of the situation. And then at the end, he kind of was like, but, you know, I don't know if it is the, the best idea to like be thinking about this right now or if it's even a good idea anymore. Um, another documentary that definitely helped out with that was the, the David Attenborough one. Um, I know that I don't think you like the end of it, right? It had the hopium in there, but that stuff is like so. A mixed bag. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. And I think that, 
there, there are aware, but it's about compartmentalizing. And I can't remember if it was on your interview or another interview that he did, but Sa- uh, is it S- Sid Smith, yeah. um, you know, he, he was like, he was saying that he thinks it's part of a full life and everything. And I definitely agree with that. But at the same time, um, if you, if, if you, if I brought a child into this world and then I can't imagine what they would have to go through, like having to go through what I've gone through, there's no way they could avo- avoid it. I don't think. Um, so I have kind of made the decision to not, um, I guess there is potentially things, factors that might change it. But at the same time, like I said, I went through chemo. And so um, I don't know if, even if I'm fertile anymore, I haven't had that checked out. I I remember when I was interviewing Rhett Butler from Manga Bay, uh, who is one of my all time heroes, uh, who knows more than any human being on this planet, how screwed we are. When he told me and when I was interviewing him, that he that he had a six week old child and i was i was i was literally struck speechless for like 20 for like 20 seconds i i don't know what the look on my face but fortunately on the interviews i you didn't see my face it, it was like i i, I could only imagine when rhett butler from mongabay.com who has spent the last 20 years of his life cataloging week after week uh how this planet is collapsing <clears throat> at age 42 uh decided to become a father i i just at that point it is, i was like oh my god uh <laughs> what are we gonna do yeah. rep butler is having kids so right now so is your decision not to have children if, if you had not gone down this rabbit hole are you think about is your decision at this point in your life not to have kids is it because of the information that you have learned about the situation is that the yeah. is that the re- leading reason certainly i wanted i used to want three kids i think like little party <laughs> family big tribe but um yeah, at this stage, it's purely influenced by this. Yeah, to have not. Have you ever had the conversation with your girlfriend, or the relationship really isn't that gotten to that point yet? It's pretty fresh. It's not like okay, okay. We won't, so, we, 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 we won't, uh, we won't go any, any further. Well, and I, 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 say, I, was, I was gonna say, I would say she's on board and like she knows my views and stuff, but by no means have we had like really in depth conversations about it. Has she ever listened to me? Mm-mm. Has she ever listened to a collapse product? No. <laughs> never, never heard of me. I don't know if she watched Sea Spiracy. You got her to watch that? Did she make it to the end? No, it didn't. <laughs> As pr- that was I pretty didn't. depressing. Yes, it certainly was. Do you eat seafood? No, not really. I never really ate a lot of seafood. My mom ate a lot, actually. She used to eat like salmon and broccoli every night, almost every night. And she just recently got mercury poisoning. She really did? Yeah. She ate it. For... Not joking? No, not joking. She went on like a health kick um, many years ago. And that was like, you know, I think that was what she determined was like the, pretty much the healthiest thing she could eat. So she ate it so often. And she would eat tuna and salad for lunch. So yeah, she did. She got mercury poisoning, but she got, she's been treated for it. But um, yeah. yeah. Good Lord. And they and mm. they figured it was from how much seafood you ate? Yeah. Good Lord. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, what do you hope your decision to want, want to do these interviews? I mean, obviously, this is going to be taking a, a big hunk of your time and uh, planning and and you're probably going to have some performance anxiety, as they would say. Be, uh, having the first interview of your life. Standard Saturday night. So what <laughs> is your motive? What, what is your motivation to this? What do you hope to accomplish by uh, interviewing folks for a channel called Collapse Chronicles? What, what, what is your part in this process? I think um, it's just refreshing to get this sort of information directly from, I want to say experts. I mean, they're probably not all experts per se, but people that seem to have like their, their thumb on the pulse of things rather than regurgitated through the mainstream media cycle or like 
I yeah. mean, Sea Spiracy was good, but it's like that's just a one-off movie. So, um, for, it, everyone likes to keep up with current affairs and the news. It's all like, even when it's dire and even when things are horrific, you you want to know the truth. I think most people, or I mean, most people tell themselves that they want to know the truth, but they want you know, there's that funny comic of like what's it called it's like comfortable comfortable um lies and then you know yeah inconvenient yeah. truths <laughs> i think there are a portion of people that want um to know the truth and, and want reality painted as uh, starkly and as realistically as you can as truthfully as people can so um that's what i really hope for and when when it comes from people who are like um i remember there was someone who you did interview that was like you know climate change is happening where you don't live so people don't see it and then they can happily walk outside like i still yeah. do today if you are dissociated enough you can have like a, a fine normal day but there's stuff happening on the other side of the world or maybe not even that far away that is collapsing right now that some people want to know about and i'm definitely one of them and i think the best way to hear about it is from people that are either experts on it or like living there or studying it yeah, yeah get this this giving uh, as you were mentioned you know when the when the mainstream media molds it so you, you, know, you read these articles in the guardian uh you know, even good articles uh but you know they interviewed like like three or four people, but the, the, and you probably figure every one of these interviews was thirty minutes where we could actually be hearing from somebody yeah. instead of this reporter with a, with his journalism degree. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, and and they use one or two quotes. They they exactly. use about thirty seconds out of a thirty minute interview. Now I used to be a you know a more traditional news reporter earlier in my life and uh and and and, and it's what we're is what's called gatekeepers and mm -hmm. so it starts with the reporter and then the editor can whittle it down and then of course you mm -hmm. hope the publishers not got you know you know what i'm saying uh stick his nose too much into your business but by the time you're finished with, with with so much of the mainstream media it is you have these little snippets from the people who know what the hell they're talking about and then you have some you know some some guy trying to explain what they're saying and, and what i enjoy about these interviews and, and on other channels is let the people who who, who spend their lives, you yeah. know, having a run with it. Exactly. And, uh, so anyway, guys, so uh, we're going to give the, 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 as he says, he has never had an interview with anyone in the world. I am taking a, uh, a, a big gamble on this young man. And I have no doubt that he is not going to, uh, embarrass me or, uh, or disappoint me we have 100 percent faith in ben roberts and is uh can we i i i learned the hard way not to talk about uh it, it was amazing how many it, it took me a while to shut up about when when I would you know when I lined up somebody for an interview and I would run my mouth and then I would go on uh, what, what, one of my fellow channels in the Doomosphere with some of my close friends and they would be sitting there interviewing the person that I just ran my mouth you know, oh he was, he's willing to talk to Sam uh, why don't I give him a call you know because <laughs> uh, so I guess we're going to be very careful can you is it too early to let folks know? Uh, can you give one name? Actually, I might just announce one. When I first came on at the start of the year, we got in touch with uh, John Michael Greer and we locked him in to interview with you. And he was, that was one of the, uh, I was most excited about at the time of the interviews that we locked in. Um, I've read a bunch of his books and I've read his, you know, his blog, but you hadn't, this was, I was surprised that you hadn't had him on yet. 
and we locked him I have in. I never had the nerve to have John Michael Greer. Uh, all right. Yeah. So, uh, so this young man who has never interviewed anybody uh, is, is going to that, – that, you, you have a certain amount of, of moxie, young man. So yeah. uh, hopefully uh, we're going to be hearing from John Michael Greer shortly. I hope what so. Are you gonna, what do you What do you want to talk to John about? Uh, everything, you know, of course, like all his views on the collapse. But I know that he has a, a different approach on it to a lot of the other guests that we've had. So I think I might dig into that a little bit as well. Okay. Yeah. Now, just don't make it. Don't let him. Don't don't let John just have the the same interview he's had with five hundred other people. Yeah. You need something fresh. Yeah. yeah. Get out there, and uh, I'm going to play my old news editor role. I, I want you to bring back. I want you to bring back something out of John Greer's mouth that uh, that has not come out of his mouth ten thousand times already. So your your assignment is to bring some fresh fodder. From okay. the brilliant mind of, of John Michael Greer. So, uh, I'll do my best because he, he's not going to let you talk much. So you're going to have to, <laughs> you're going to, you're going to have to hold your own with that, with that dude. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, we will just hold it with that. Uh, but Peter Raven, just tell us a little bit more about, uh, about Peter. He's a good guy. Yeah. I'm interested in, in hearing his take on collapse because the lectures I've seen him do, he talks more about, um, you know, what we can do. Um, I'm just, and they're a few years old. So I'm wondering, you know, if he still thinks we have, um, we can course correct because, um, the lectures I saw in the past, he did talk about course correction, you know, what, what hum humans can do to change our course and this sort of thing. So what do you think humans can do to change our course? This is an interesting one that I actually think about a lot. And I would, um, like to use this as a segue to invite you for my, as my first interview. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that. I, I, I asked you in Skype, <laughs> but you were like, <laughs> yeah. So I, would, I could probably, I would like to test the waters with you. I think that'd be good. And it would be like, a good yeah, he's, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to be this young man, but that may or may not happen. Uh, so maybe I'll get John Michael Greer and then, then uh, I'll let John Michael Greer be my opening act. We'll see how that works out. <laughs> All right. Well, I do think about that a lot. And honestly, though, that's like something that I, I would like to hear from people. Um, I don't want to go I'm too much into like... I'm not, not going to get out. You're not going to weasel out of this, is it? <laughs> what can I, humans do? I don't want to hypothesize right. too much, but, you know, I often fantasize about like what, what would be possible if you had like, you know, God powers or the, you had control over every human on the planet, you know, we could Thanos the planet. Um, but at this stage, if I'm realistic, I don't know, it's, if I'd be really honest and realistic, I think what will happen will be really bad because... I don't think that there's anything that's going to happen from like the, the mainstream populace. Like I can't even imagine this, um, you know, I've heard people say like that when things are going wrong, people double down more on their fantasies and more like they disconnect yeah. further oh, from yeah. reality. So oh, yeah. there's that with the mainstream, but then on the other aspect, like I worry about what the powers that be and what like the elites, because the only thing that I see happening and they don't even really hide it anymore is them solidifying power, widening the gap between us and them. And there's still so much, so many people that don't get that they're not on our team or I don't think they are. Um, <laughs> You're you know, kidding. You yeah, mean the 650 crazy. billionaires who have made $1.6 trillion in the U.S. in the past year while at 43 million Americans are getting ready to be homeless. So we got 650 people uh, splitting the $1.6 trillion. Anyway, yeah. wait, that's a whole nother rant for another day. Well, well, anyway, well to answer your question, uh, to answer, to answer your question, I, I worry about what they will do and, 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 you know, they have a lot of power. Um, and I, I wouldn't put violence past them. I wouldn't put anything um, past them. To course correct, I think they would try something desperate and, you know, everyday people though, I hope they do stuff that fulfills them and I hope they do try and minimize the impact and, and do try to live sustainably and not just mindlessly consume, but 
at the same time, you could also argue that the system is the machine is running. Like, why not just benefit and just enjoy it while you can? There's that argument too. There is um, that argument too. So I, I don't know. I, I honestly switch between both tracks at times. Like, it's a tough one. Okay, and with that, guys, uh, we're going to wish Ben well on his new quest and. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I want to be able to come back in 10 years and say, take all the credit. Uh, I, I, when, when, when he is the most famous uh, Doomosphere interviewer, I, I'm going to say, I taught that young man everything he knows about <laughs> interviewing Doomers. Okay. I'm going to take all the credit for your for your future success. And uh, so, when you're 61 years old, brother, uh, if there's still a planet, uh, uh, I would love That's to hear weird. what you have to say when you're my age. But I will be long dead by then, and uh, so you'll have to uh, tell us people, if, the other 61 year olds. We might have your head in the jar, Sam. I might be speaking to <laughs> we, got the bug, we got the bugs in the jar up here in New York. All right, guys. So let's all wish. Uh, They'll rename it Sam in a jar. Let's all wish, uh, wish Brother Ben here uh, success and, and show this man some love. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not at all sure there's going to be an interview with Sam Mitchell on here or not, but uh, we will see. Come on, Sam. The people want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give the people what they want. Okay, we'll. we'll. Ease me in. You could ease me in. <laughs> You could say, you could say, I was his first interview. I was that. I would rather say I taught the, this young man everything he knows about uh, interviewing people, how uh, how screwed we are. Anyway, guys, so let's all uh, give this man a big hand, and, and we're rooting for you, young man. And uh, so. we need more people, as Sandy was just visiting today, and uh, what she was talking about we, when we were talking about you, I think, uh, when we need more, we, we have enough 61 year old white men, uh, talking about this. Now you are a yeah. white man. I see. Uh, I'm sorry. But, but, you know, but, but we need more 27 year olds bringing the face it. We don't have many 27 year olds. You, you, you want to hear one damn word. I have to some 61 year old former real estate agent, uh, running around with his hippie hair and his collapse, right? You know, but they're going to listen to you. We'll see. I and uh, we, we, we need some young blood. I, all, all joking aside, man, we, we are we are glad to have some young blood uh, in this conversation because, it, it, it's, it's you know, we've already screwed things up. We've screwed it up for you. And uh, I don't know why you're not ready to kill me. I don't know why you're not reaching through here and strangling me, brother. <laughs> but uh, we, we need more... 20 somethings in this conversation and, and all joking aside uh we appreciate it and and anything i can do to uh to to bring the the, the next you know the youngsters into this debate yeah. that's what i'm here for so, appreciate uh, you sam and i appreciate everything you've done the good fight that you've put up so far that's all we can great say. content you've put out the fantastic interviews keep up the good fight thank you all right guys uh and thank you for being my first interview next week and a happy <laughs> uh happy happy third anniversary collapse chronicles yeah happy birthday. all right guys and uh obviously don't hang up on me when we stop this young man is also he is the one controlling the knobs here so we're gonna say uh, i'm gonna say bye guys and say goodbye and enjoy it while you still can <laughs> There you go. Later.